um, today there's I see a, an equivalent to this industrial revolution, which comes in completely different appearances. It's not physical man and woman power anymore to be replaced with cognitive one, um, which I think, yeah, comes with a lot of uh, problems in the future and possibilities as well. Um, Okay, na naively seen, automation could lead to prosperity, creativity, self-empowerment, and freedom. Um, in the following, I want to point out some mechanisms, why they do not, in my opinion, and from my experience. Uh, just to say about me, some words. Uh, I uh, studied uh, pure mathematics in uh, in uh, Berlin and in, and in um, England for a year or so. Um, I did my bachelor uh, thesis on deep neural networks and my whole studies in the bachelor I did about um, astrophysics. <laughs> so just, uh, yeah, like in the, like in the end of my Bachelor, I, I realized I, I, I made one course machine learning. I realized how big the problem is, kind of like we did a crime prediction tool there, and it worked like very easily with very when do planets collide, please? Planets? Ah, uh, when do planets collide? <laughs> oh, yeah, I did. I did differential geometry uh, and topology. Like I, I remember, I remember one, I remember one uh, problem that we had to solve, and it was uh, about uh, the Umlaufbahn from planeten. I don't know, like planets and, and how they would go and Einstein, but but I don't know much about physics. I did more the topology part, um, but it's uh, also some time ago. <laughs> um, anyway, so I, um, yeah, I, <clears throat> I did my bachelor thesis on uh, deep neural networks uh, and in the field of function analysis and um, coded a year on my bachelor thesis. And the thesis itself was then just describing the. Um, anyway, I don't want to talk too much about my person. I want to uh, go on with uh, what I want to talk about, and I think it's very important. And I'm, I was working more than one year and a half on it without taking any money because I think it's very important. And finally, I got some people and some collectives and it's growing, but I will come to that. Anyway, so the first problematic mechanism that I see is that in a hierarchical company becomes an own organism in a not intended way. Ah, what I should, just one thing, I studied mathematics and philosophy in uh, Berlin, yeah. And I wanted to do like logic and analytical philosophy, but I went to paradox philosophy and anarchism in the end, and existentialism and all this. Yeah, anyway. So, back to uh, my track. <laughs> the first problematic mechanism is that, hierarchical company, uh, that a hierarchical company becomes an own organism in a not intended way. In his book, Discipline and Punish, the French philosopher Michel Foucault analyzes systems of hierarchy based on punishment and monitoring installed by humans to rule. He shows that in the end, the masters become slaves themselves, not slaves of uh, new human masters, but slaves of their own machine. The bigger such an hierarchical organism becomes, the stronger these mechanisms start to take hold. So that's the first problematic mechanism um, in society that I will 
refer back to later, um, which is yeah, which will become part of the analysis of the problem why automation for the automated is problematic. Anyway, if I transfer this model to nowadays, short term money reward replaces the punishment. Dopamine seems to be a better conditioning tool than fear. So let's picture such a hierarchical system that becomes an organism itself as an octopus. Yeah. <laughs> I came up with the idea to make the image of an octopus. The octopus will tend um, to not lose its brain instead of one of dozens of arms. Also, the arms, as they are in the majority, are a better target for money accumulation through replacement. And in the case of cognitive automation, the octopus would even be able to copy and paste its arms. So, like, massively a lot. Um, <laughs> I come to the conclusion, which I will use later on, bigger and more hierarchical organisms tend to prefer short-term money accumulation. No? Oh, oh, oh. Short-term money accumulation over social and thoughtful acting for the benefit of the lower hierarchy. Right. So next one. What I have experienced quite often is the following. When I meet someone new, <clears throat> an important question for me is, what are you doing in life, like your day? It's not because I want to know status or because I want to know if he has money or I don't know. It's just because I'm interested what people do or what people treat as normal, uh, what they do most of the time. And then often the answer is, my job is this, that, and yeah, I don't make so many friends with that often. But anyway, often then, again often, I come to the conclusion that I could automate what they are doing uh, in parts or in bigger parts, like calculating it with the time I could do it, you know. And then also most of the time, the person, that I tell that they tend to um, argue like really heavily why their job will never be automated, why it cannot be automated, etc. etc. So imagine you would have learned your job half your life, now a machine can do your activity. How senseless will you feel if your self construction is bound to what you have done? Yeah. Which for me, um, how this the, or what I'm experience is if, if I want to automate the big problem are the automated themselves first because of identification with what they are doing so looking at the normality most automation procedures end in replacing the workers not enhancing them to cyborgs this leads the potentially automated to predict a negative outcome for themselves which comes to the, um, where I come to the conclusion, if I want to automate the big problem, um, are the automated themselves because of their own predictions. Next one. Lots of automated jobs are in big companies with secure jobs. Jobs that are repetitive. People working in these tend to be less willing to take risks. So if I want to automate, again, a problem are the automated themselves because they tend to take less risk. Okay, let my will be to automate for the automated. To help someone who works, who needs less time for his work, or simply to have a ma machine, a program that does the repetitive work for the worker. If I want to have a big impact with my automation at the same time, I would be forced to take a big number of individuals seriously. Making an automation deal with a hierarchical organism simplifies a lot here. I need to communicate and argue much less um, since I just have to talk to some higher higher hierarchical point and everyone else will is like the body of the um, neurons kind of in, in this association system. 
I guess someone, anyway, um, yeah, I hope it's not too complicated what I'm saying. Uh, I read like a lot of philosophy and I can really recommend uh, Spinoza on the Association of System Ethics, yeah, and and uh, some like Lem, uh, Stanislav Lem and, and Asimov there. Yeah. Anyway. Um, all right. So I come to the conclusion if I want to automate, it is much easier with hierarchical companies. All right. Um, automation has its biggest value if the program can help a bigger number of organisms. This is often the case in big companies. There you have a higher level of specialization, uh, specialization and often a lot of people doing this, the same job. Cognitive automation needs a lot of resources. One resource and probably the most important one is data. The bigger the company is, the more people are doing the task, the more data will be avail uh, available. Most people in society work for companies, which also means they sell their they are data day, uh, day by day for money. Um, to help them to become cyborgs is difficult because firstly, they do not own their data and secondly, they cannot produce data outside of their working environment. The other resource is money, of course. Bigger companies also tend to have more money available. Yeah, <laughs> And also if you go to the bosses, and you say, hey, I can put all your human resource uh, and, and you can take all the money for all the time, you know, like you have a big amount of money that you can like share. Yeah. All right. Um, if I want to automate, it is much easier with big companies. That's a problem. So big hierarchical companies are the better targets of automation. And regarding the thoughts in the beginning of the presentation, um, this does not lead to an automation for the automated. What approaches could be important to work against these mechanisms? Okay, there are two big answers that came into my way quite often in political, respectively, uh, philosophical um, arguments or discussions. First idea is some sort of machine text either taxation of the companies or taxation of the robots themselves. Another idea that I want to point out here is the ground income, uh, which is based on the first idea. Okay, first I, I will say some things about that. So looking at Amazon, Google, Facebook and so, I personally think this won't work. The governments are not able to take regular taxes from these big organisms nowadays even regular texts are not possible. Taxation always relies on some sort of association system uh, such as the law system and big organisms will always be able to corrupt these association systems for their needs. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, ah, if, if there are not a lot of people thinking and acting because we also see like, uh, in examples like the Hambacher Force in Germany that um, a bunch of people can stop interest of billions if they are organized and yeah, self-empowered and thinking. But anyway, <coughs> um, hmm. all right. So anyway, as I do not want to wait for a general to not forget national income, I started to work out an approach to solve the previous problems with the help of people, of the people around me. So what needs to be done was always clear to me since I emerged in the field of AI with my studies of math, you know that. Yeah. I wanted to raise the consciousness of the power of data and change hierarchies not by taking anything from anyone, but through 
balancing distribution of the outcome of sports simulation. So first I worked a year um, to found the company um, regarding, I don't know, how much time do we have? Because I, I have cut something out of, okay, 20 minutes. 20 minutes is, uh, is enough. I will tell. Okay, uh, basically I started, I was on a fair and I met a guy from Barcelona and it was about IOT and he told me, yeah, um, I met him there and he told me, yeah, he has already like help from um, professors of uh, the Barcelona um, Technical University and Via Group. And he wrote like thousands of pages and he was really brilliant, like good grades, blah, blah. I was looking for investors, mm, had much resources and energy and time to do all this all the time. And he told me, yeah, his idea is to install everywhere cameras everywhere like in the street everywhere to enable uh, automated driving of cars that i don't know on these fair they were producing five uh, giga uh, gigabytes of data every day of their surrounding you know that's quite a lot i think anyway so i thought this cannot be <laughs> Um, first, I tried to, to change this idea and I, I called it in like the object detection algorithm, uh, which is not very difficult to do because there's like YOLO and you just have to install it and it works quite well. Anyway, um, at this time, some time ago, I, I was not able to uh, convince him to not follow this like path and I start to build a chaos cube. Like uh, bringing, my idea was to bring Darknet to my grandma in in a cube that replaced the internet with some Bitcoin, uh, like with with some coin on Ethernet as well and blah blah. So I worked a year on that and I realized it's quite difficult to get money for security stuff. <laughs> and uh, I started to do what I I'm good at. I started to do math and code it into Python. Um, yeah, I came, I came quite far with the case to like at least if something working and be able to, but the, anyway. Um, I even met this guy uh, who invented, uh, who, who invented, no? Bitcoin, the second one is, fuck, I was, Token on it's Ethereum, Ethereum. Yeah, uh, this Russian guy, Ethereum. I, I I just had to, I had a pitch in front of him, <laughs> and I I talk like this. I'm talking now, you know, like uh, I don't know. It's uh, it's not a problem anymore because I'm like, yeah, right. So this didn't work. I did what I was able to do. I I built like with TensorFlow some database access stuff uh, and um, and used the uh, word to back. Um, if someone of you knows this kind of stuff to make like to build a database search engine for lawyers because I know a lot of lawyers uh, from my um, political ac activism that need help. Okay, still some time left. Ah, no. I think. No, there's still a lot of time left, right? Yeah, perfect. Um, <clears throat> I met, um, yeah, I went a lot to the Test Communication Club uh, and uh, got a lot of help and I did like only coding, coding, coding. I had a lot of personal problems as well this time. Um, then they helped me with a really big machine. Like I made a model that I still have um, that needs like 100 G gigabyte of, of uh, RAM, just RAM. And yeah, then I 
then doing hitchhiking, I met uh, Zara, uh, my uh, main political and political and um, economical partner. Um, really cool. She um, is in Karlsruhe and uh, does has like several democratic collectives that she just formed, you know, and she is exactly what I'm not able to do. She talks all the time and it's very like she was a hippie once. <laughs> to say. Like I know her a bit better now. And and uh, now she's like very, really like, you know, looks like, I don't know, how, how can I say it? I have all the like new clothes and like, yeah, yeah, like all the people that are destroying the planet. Like she has like consumption going away and she talks to big organisms and puts the money into other channels by even telling the big organisms that they are not able to use the social stuff for uh, their benefit. Um, also a lot, in, a lot in politics. Anyway, she has several democratic collectives. They have really nice places. Um, big platform. She's mainly a platform creating also space, you know. And uh, through, through her, I met Frank, who has also several collectives. And um, they gave me some money so I could work a year on a special algorithm for um, translation of German into German. <laughs> no, but German into a special German that so there's basically really there are translators that take a lot of money because they're translating German into simple German, which is very important. Uh, actually, because disabled people and also um, migrants or in general people that are not like in university all the time and reading all the time, they um, Or yeah, or they either they are very smart, uh, but they are not able to understand like complicated sentences. Um, and <clears throat> yeah, and and I'm I'm build, I, I was building this uh, algorithm like almost a year now. I have like ten thousand lines of code. Um, don't ask me why. No, I can tell you why because I wanted to to do something before generating data with people because I think it's like I have some friends that I don't know are generating data in uh, in India and stuff and I don't like it I don't like it I don't like it. even even with the translators I I am working right now because prototype is already online and I want to put it um, open source at some, some point, but I first need a good, so if someone of you and if there is even someone there still uh, knows about like licenses, I would like to make a license that makes it not possible for anything I create to use it for big organisms. Make, yeah. make it usable for, so make it not usable for big organisms. Um, right. Big hierarchical organisms, because somehow, like we are all big organisms, right? Anyway, um, yeah. So, um, yeah, no, I know. Yeah, right. So I, I coded this program like quite a lot and now it's even online and the uh, translator um, she can use it already and it already helps her a little bit you know so it's funny to her, for her to use it and believe me the biggest step forward for me was to just make graphical user face with some colors <laughs> I don't know why uh, sometimes I have the feeling that nobody 
really understand what I was doing here, but anyway. But nevertheless, everyone is happy and it's going forward very, very slow because it's the social sector, I guess. And so now I was always working with the economical people, like, and, and there it was like, bam, 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 bam. Um, yeah, also machine learning stuff and, and everything. And hmm. I like especially things that I do not yet know because then I learn the most. Um, yeah, but the core of the whole venture is the structure of the new form organism. Oh, I see just 10 minutes left and I would like to um, also get some questions, but hopefully like I will um, so hopefully there's someone who wants to talk or has an idea how I can help. You know, like it's always help in both directions. That's cool. Um, shit. And it's good, like, okay. um, understand why you use it and it's better to use than Skype or something. Anyway. And yeah. We are in the beginning of free hardware, but it's going with time and time. Yeah, okay, wait. Most important thing. And there's also something I can provide. Um, the core of the whole venture is the structure of our new formed organism. We all agree that all outputs will be evenly distributed in salaries. We agree that the salary of everyone the collective, collective will be limited. Conceptually, if the whole thing will work, all outputs minus the salaries will go into a democratically controlled foundation. The plan is to have a foundation owning a GMBH, which is more like an economical construct where we can fight as well. So in the end, the output for everyone will be more money to act, less money for personal use. In our concept of democracy, the survival of the organism is highest, idealistic arguments are second, and profit is third. That means you have always a veto if the veto does not destroy the survival of the collective. Our plan is to show that this concept works, that it works better, and that it produces even better results regarding data and algorithms. After showing that it is possible, referring to it should make it easier to solve one of the core problems that the automated themselves are a problem for the automation. If you solve this and with some capital, it will be possible to target automation outside of the social sector. Um, also, this first step has, subject, has, has a subject translators, and these are paid by amount of text. Regarding the problem of time based salary, uh, with cyber enhancement, the employees would still have a higher value on the market. And as a, yeah, and, and I would be happy about the world where um, yeah, where you say like, okay, every automation has to get this like foundation job X, you know, and um, the people that did the job before should be um, the new, like, I don't know, democratically ruling people of their, like, foundations that have to, like, go more and more like this. But like that, the people have more the feeling that they are the people. Because, yeah, they are the people. Like, when I build these models, these AI, AI is just a statistical, model of the brain of the translator so in the end it's her like okay of course if i take like more translators then it's the model out of 
all the brains and it's like better than each one alone, right? Because it takes probably like um, yeah, yeah. But what I want to say is that's why I also think that it's her machine, even if it's difficult for me to make her understand the code, which I was the first what I wanted to do. But yeah, at least I um, will. Yeah, but it's going forward and the data is rising and the algorithm is working more and more. And yeah, I have time now. And um, I would love to hear your questions. It's just five minutes. Um, gone. And uh, yeah. I hope um, uh, does anyone have um, questions? All right, I guess. Um. Hmm. I don't know. Anyway, anyway, uh, anyway, I hope uh, that you all will be able to do what you want to do, and I hope that you will be able to make everyone else. Uh, doing what everyone else wants to do. And yeah, I'm, I'm working and it's fun. I have enough capital to live for a long time because I consume nothing and I don't need nothing. Um, except of my friends and uh, my, yeah, <laughs> and building stuff. And I have a lot of ideas, and it's um, fun. So. Hmm. No. Ah, and I'm very um, excited to hear the next talk because I already heard from that were quite interesting. I just, um, yeah, I just love to listen normally. Yeah. That's why I talk so strangely, I guess. All right. Mm -hmm.